You are on to a life transforming experience as Pastor Prince Abbott brings you God's word with deep insight and power. God bless you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. We give you glory. Thank you for your presence. We give you praise. We give you praise. Praise. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Lord, you are my passion. Higher. Holy Spirit, you are my passion. You are everything I thirst for. You are everything I hunger. I, I can't survive without you. We give you glory. I can't breathe without you. Only you can take my breath away. I can't, I can't live without you. It's just like surviving outside my natural habitat. You are my natural habitat. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, we give you glory. We give you praise. We give you praise. Thank you, Father. Be thou exalted forevermore. Let the teaching of tonight open our eyes to see beyond here and see where you are taking us to. Glory to your name forevermore. Name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Okay, settle down. I think I should say this few things before we get into some of the deeper things I have to share with you now. Um, you see, one of the laws of success is the law of observation. That's one of the laws of success. The law of observation. The law of observation. The law of observation. I think about 90% of what you are learning comes through what you are seeing. 90% or so flows through pictures what you are seeing what you are seeing what you are seeing what you are seeing so we have decided to make the issue of observation in this ministry key key we decided to make it a very key factor we won't play with it we won't play with it you, you may not understand what I'm doing with you now one day you're going to find out you're, wow so this is the whole idea we finish service and they asked us to come back for another one in the evening. Wow. We thought it was it's so stressful, but that's what it's gonna pay off. Because to succeed, you need to learn how to travel the road, least traveled. To to rule over men, you need to learn how to do what they don't do. That's the way it works. What does the word extraordinary mean? Simple and extra added to an ordinary. That's extraordinary. It's called extra, the hyphen, ordinary. Extraordinary man. What makes ordinary men extraordinary is the extra things they are doing that ordinary men refuse to do. So this is extra. So service has finished. Others have gone back home now. I say five o'clock report. Let's have one hour or two hours born training ourselves for the future. That's the extra that makes men extraordinary. But only few become it. Insanity is defined as doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result. That's insanity. Mm. The last thing where they made gold in cold fire. It's hot fire. It has to melt the whole thing down. Start remaking. So you heard you heard your name. You you're gonna have to go there, pick your department, carry your department in mind and go and study. Carry your pastor in mind, carry your pastoring assignment in mind and go and study. At least I know when is the service in their church there is mega. We may not say Sunday because of our own service here. So when is the thank God our services are Tuesdays, our own music services. So when is the we just go there? Well, I go and see what men have done. Go and see a son under my father in the Lord, pastor in the church, and he has the disposition of a father. He has the result within his command. Mega. So when you see, then I show you, I can see this man. Oh. You see this man called Pastor Lord. See this one. This man. He was like you. 
So if you see him now driving this jeep, he's driving this fleet of jeep, he's driving and building this kind of look at what he's doing here. It is possible for you too. When you see it, you come back with that image. You know, the biggest nation in the world is not China nation, it's not American nation, it's called image nation. Image nation is imagination. things. One of the unfortunate things I've seen in life is people always making plans to travel China. They want to travel to India. They want to travel to America. They want to travel. I tell them, all these nations you're planning to travel, have you traveled the one in your mind? It's a nation called Image Nation. God packed it. Oh my God. Do you know that the imagination is a big thing to be wasted? It's so loaded. That you can snap in, you can build skyscrapers there. You can repicture your life here. Whatever you want to become, you, you can design it here. One of the places I first pictured Priestley Hills here. So when I caught pictures, for instance, when I go out to see pictures, I go and observe Koza, I go and observe Daystar, I observe all those big ministries and all that. One of the things I am doing is I'm sharpening the edge of my mind. Seeing what men have done. For instance, okay, see the way I'm dressed. Hmm? There's no mistake in my dress, you know. You can't catch one mistake in it. Haircut, dressing, shoe, polish. It's not because, okay, it's because he's a senior pastor. No, that is not it. One of the things I sharpened the edge of my dressing. Observation. You had a speaker when he was speaking this morning. He said, I wonder if this one is a church or if, if he's a pastor. Because I observe the corporate world a lot. So I look at them. I know bling bling all those white suits which shine shine by the distance. It's not my kind of dressing. With 13 buttons. Coats of many colors. I'm not Joseph. So I, I've observed an excellent word. Picture the word out there. Wow. I observe everything. And it has changed my self-concept about me. I observe kings. I don't have nothing to do with mere men. I observe kings. Do you know it came to a point in life? I, hey, when I see a convoy passing, I stop to observe him. Days of Abacha. When Abacha is driving 504 those days with his convoy and they are passing Makodi those days, I run out from the estates. I go and stay at the and be observing convoy. Endless convoy. And I was having pictures of presidency in my mind. Do you know sometimes I go for a meeting? Maybe it's Pastor Chris who is coming to preach, or Pastor David O'Willy, my father, who is coming to preach. I'm always hurrying. I don't want to miss the session he's coming in the you. Others ask, well, let's go and preach. Let's go and hear preaching. You're not going to hear preaching alone. When is he coming in? I want to know when he's coming in. And why praise is going on? People are praising, jumping. Some people don't even know when he comes. I would always look him back. And I always go and find myself strategically positioned in a place where I would pick him when he comes. Guess what I want to observe? His triumphant entry. I just want to observe the siren. The way he's turning. Then observe the convoy. Then I also want to observe the protocol running. Then I want to observe the ADC coming out from the car and giving an instruction on when the door should be opened. Then I also want to observe, how does the man come out? Does he come out like one beggar? One slave? <laughs> Is that what he does? How does he come down from the car? As he comes down, he's walking. You see his team. There's a way they walk around him. There's a way he's poised. There's, there's a kind of poise he carries. There's a way he's doing... You just know this one is a king. Then as he's coming, all the generals, all the pastors, they stand up. 
I watch the way he salutes them and goes to sit down. And, the way he even does his I watch it all. It's not the way he bless you. God bless you. God. I, I say this one is a king. I observe to the details. Ninety percent of who I am, it came through seeing things, seeing, seeing. It's not because I heard so much, seeing, seeing it. So teach me that thing. Finish. I want to go and see it. I want to go and see it. I observe. How does this man teach? Okay, after teaching, how does he close his speech? How does he pray? How does he? Okay. That's the essence of traveling. I observe all those things. Up. All right. I think I should also say this one, then I get into this. There are some hot books I have here. Don't know how you take the issue of books, but I think if there's anything that has sharpened me, books, books, I don't know how you take it. Fortunately, rather than unfortunately, I have just limited copies. When I saw the books, of course, Pastor Kingsley, when he came for the business summit we had, he came with a couple of books. I had to pick the last ones he had. So there's this one I have on the power of a praying church, experiencing God move as we pray together. You don't know I ask you to join your hands together. There's this thing called the corporate anointing. When church knows how to pray in unity, anything happens. Okay, we're going to be taking a series on prayers during the, the minister's conference. I think there you're going to be learning a lot of these things on how to pray. There's a way to pray. There are prayers you pray that get instant results. So, when I ran into this material, I had to empty my pocket and I bought it. Unfortunately, I had, we just had one of this one only. So, I had to buy it for myself. I'm trying to see if I can make more order for copies from him. Get me some of those books that can help build people's lives, build great ministries, so we can have them on our stand. For the minister summit. So this is the power of a praying church. And it's amazing. It's, it's indeed amazing. It's an amazing book. You need to read this book. So you can, you can book for a copy of it. And when they arrive, we'll give to you. Now, there's this other one that is important. If you, if you notice, I didn't display them on the stand. I had to keep these ones in. Because they are books when I get them. I know you can't find these ones in the market. I treasure them. I bought one for myself. Then I bought extra three for extra for three serious minded people who want to. The book is titled Turn the World Upside Down. It's powerful. Discipling the nations with the seven mountain strategy. My God, the principles in this book can tear you into pieces. Now, when I bought the book, I said I'm even going to sell it ten times the price of the book. Because it's scarce. Okay, I won't sell it that way. I'm just trying to pull your leg. God, anyone who gets this book, you are pastoring under me. You get this book. You, you're going to travel further than your equals. It's three. I don't know how to share it. I told him, oh, get me some more. This one. I've consumed the book to a place, to a level the book is consuming me now. Amazingly, this guy writes wisdom. Michael Maiden. The book is amazing. You find out the secret of this word you are seeing can actually be capsided. Hi. It can be turned around. I'm saying that you, 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 I'm not talking about Ora, Rob, Ora Roberts. Now. I'm talking about you. That you can take this word, you can take a nation. And turn the landscape of that nation upside down. And everything in that nation will respond to your call. Everything. Presidents of nations, governors, ministers, the people in the nation will run in your direction. It, my goodness. That's, that's what is obsessing me. There are secrets I'm finding daily. And I'm gaining insight into how I could. I 
like the way one of my friends said it. Mm, I think that's Pastor Love. He said, Pastor, do you know that the money in government house are actually for church people who know how to solve government problems? He said, do you know why most pastors are not poor? He said, check all these great men who have done great things the world over. Check them. Miles Moron. Sunday Delager. Check them. Sometimes speak the book of Sunday Delager. Watch the praise for the book. And see the people who are writing praise for him. Bill Clinton. Um, Tony Blair. Bill Gates. Check all those class of people. Miles Moron. People who are writing praise for the book. For a boy who was abandoned as an orphan. Check it. And anytime I read those books, I ask, why are there few people who are catching it? Why are there few people? Why? Why? Why are these things scarce in this dispensation now? What did the guy go to Russia to do? Study journalism, like any other journalist who went there. That's under the ledger. After I studied journalism, God picked him. Very tender age. He saw a problem in, in Russia. A nation bound by the iron cutting of communism. You couldn't preach the gospel those days. You can't. You kill you. He dared it. He said, what? In this city, me, can't preach the gospel. So all this life Jesus died for will go to hell. And the man stick his neck. Now, can you see the ripple effect of one man sold out life? 85% of his church are parliamentarians, government officials, ministers, mayors of city in his church. 90, over 90% of the, okay, 97, I saw, or there about, 97 or 98% of the members of his church are white people. But he's a black man. From Nigeria, a Yoruba man. Took a whole nation. There, there are things when you settle down to study. When you settle down to research. Listen, no, listen. Until you learn how to research, men won't search for you. Go and get this thing. There are men people are searching for. Their itineraries are so hot, so tight, so tight. The people who are calling them are governors. Senators, ministers, House of Reps members, come and talk to us, sir. Teachers, you know what happens after the man is done with that stuff? The level of financial conversion that follows. When you hear that the wealth of the Hades will be converted, to which you would ask a question. Think God just converts wealth. No, converted to people who are doing ministry, who are solving problems. Men who will sit down and study a problem in society until they find the solution to that problem. They will not rest. Those are the ones who will actually search for. And that's what I am daily consciously doing. There's no one minute of my life I'm living in purposelessness. Not one. If you follow these things I'm teaching you, if you follow these things I'm teaching you, incline your heart to these things I'm teaching you, you're going to become a highly sought after man or woman. I'm telling you. Revenue Yeeks was in New York early this year. What was that? What was that place? What was that place? Um, United Nations Youth Assembly to address them on issues of employment. That's a pastor who inclined her ears to the sayings of her pastor. What problem have you found 
when you find that problem go sit down and start exhausting materials you will find out the strategies to address that problem you know there's a problem in the educational sector alone now this book will show you how discipling the nations with the seven mountain strategy church is not the only strategy for discipling nations there's a strategy school is a strategy if somebody catches a ministry now for the educational sphere how to solve the problems of young people when government finds out there's a lady in town who is stopping prostitution in this city who is stopping who is stopping courtism she just takes a child and turns the girl's life upside down hey the day they will send for you at the government house to come and tell them what did you do you see the way they are calling for malala now that pakistan girl that small 17 years old malala you see the way they are calling for ngozi adichia chimamanda just for sitting down study the problem of what do you call it the civil war biafra this and that 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 study colonialism and some of those stuff and did some serious writing titled one half a yellow son titled an africana read that girl's book eh you will not just see a writer who is writing you see somebody who is solving a problem somebody who is using a writing to solve a major problem and nations are calling the girl she's too hot now if that lady is invited to a boy to come and give just come and share one or two Let's have a Maybe on democracy day or anything this town they may be stampeding how one small girl unmarried has become so relevant by sitting down go and check check all these people they cannot tell you of their success without showing you their fathers so you see the girl cannot conclusive say hey i got she will point you to chino achebe she will point you to him Pastor Yves cannot finish telling you I went to youth assembly in New York to talk at the United Nations, whatever, without telling you Pastor David was the one who helped me discover and redefine that vision. That's why you see, I find materials that will help you. I know this thing will help this person. I know this person has this kind of ministry and vision. Okay, how do I equip this person? I pick the materials and make it available. If you want to do church the way you have always known it, you won't get results. Do you know what is making me get results in ministry? I'm not playing church. I am doing church from a different dimension. I'm not doing church from the religious dimension. I've studied Jesus' life. He was not doing church from religious. That was why he kept having problems with religious people. Check the people who were doing as collectors republicans and tax collectors doesn't mean beggars tax collectors were revenue officers they were the ones in charge of the money the money bank they were the ones in charge of revenue in the land the question is what was he preaching that made them gravitated to him i'm telling you i know i found that jesus had economic summits he had it when he was about to feed 5,000 people or more, do you know he employed the, one of the highest laws of economics? He put it in motion. Can show you some of the laws in economics. He put in motion there. He deployed organizational skills there. Sit down. What was he doing? And he, everybody didn't sit down together. He sat down in a group of 50s. How he took a big crowd, broke it to. See, planning in motion. No wonder. Can't you see the Pharisees? The, why the Republicans and the tax collectors were gravitating towards Jesus? They couldn't gravitate towards them. They have been there, but why couldn't they solve their problems? When Jesus came, he came with a different. See, they were calling him all kinds of names. Is he the king of Jews? Herod was afraid. He thought he was coming to unseat him from power. 
Don't you know there's a way you get, there's a level you build yourself as a pastor, as a minister. People will be skeptical whether you're going to contest for presidency. You think if Miles Moro wanted to contest for president of Bahamas, he won't win? He had what it takes, then he had the people, he had the connections. So the kind of connection Jesus had made people skeptical. What is he up to? Herod was scared even when he had the prophecy. The prophecy that was given about Jesus was not the church prophecy. He shall deliver my people. There's, there's, there's a dimension of Christianity we are not yet in touch with. That one is the one that turns believers to deliverers. So Christianity ends that I'm a believer. Praise the Lord. Look at it here. To turn, deliver and disciple every believer into the... After the discipling of believers, the next thing is to release. That output phase of releasing a united body of transformational leaders with a strong sense of purpose and ministry. It is said to the church, to all spheres of society. Because church is a factory. And you are the product. You are ministers. We are making you to release you. As a chance of transformation. What I'm saying is that somebody who can can catch a vision for teenagers in school. We can create one in church. It's called a system. Call it. Okay, can't you see? There's one called hype. Just teenagers. It's not church. We can create one. Somebody who has a ministry mindset can create something. Okay, what is the problem? What is prevalent right now in, in the teenage world? System. Deep. Start solving youth's problem. Problems associated with teenagers. That is my secret. I'm not a ministry from church dimension. I finished preaching somewhere. And a general walked up to me and said, Sir, what you are saying? I have not heard any pastor said it, sir. Your preaching doesn't sound like, and you know, I took the people by storm. The first day of that conference, what did we global missions conference? First day of that conference in Delta State. The first day, the, the dimension I approached church. I said, All the bishops, everybody, choir members, they were, where is this guy coming from? Like, is this guy a pastor? The kind of understanding he has about my God. So this, I took them on the purpose of the church, how to transform your society and all of that. By the time I was done, two days. Okay, I finished. I talked on the seven W crisis of manhood. Maybe we're going to play that tape in a few minutes. Have you listened to that tape? The seven W crisis of manhood. Does it look like what the pastor preaches, sir? That's what you preach in youth congress. Just gather the whole youth of a nation. Maybe men. In a particular community that's not progressing, you see alcoholism is high, you see prostitution is high. Just speak. I've even done the seven W crisis of womanhood. I'm waiting for the day we'll do women's convention. I will teach it. You finish talking, you have not yet mentioned Jesus or in the preaching. You're just talking of basic day-to-day things people can see and you are tracing the reasons responsible and some of the reasons i'm tracing are not spiritual they are social reasons why is that guy living a broken life there are factors that may be responsible number one check fatherlessness so how does he have to do with demons now the father was not there for him okay abuse why is that guy associating with bad guns? Why is that lady always looking for where to flirt around and all that? Check. She loved, she lacked father's attention. She lacked father's love. Why are some men not able to take responsibility for themselves and for their future? Okay, check. Two wounds are irresponsible. Father and mother wound. They were over pampered. Please. Where have I mentioned the Bible in these factors? Can you see? This is why I'm approaching church now. So I look at people and study them. That is one of the laws of social transformation. For you to change society, you must study society. For you to change a person, you need to study that person. There was a clip I played for her in my office. I played that just few things I told her. I said, let me show you the clip. 
of a particular boy who couldn't comprehend anything in class. And how a teacher who think, oh, my head is full with a lot of things. A teacher who understood the boy. The father didn't understand the boy. In fact, the father kept making things worse for the boy. The boy sits in class. Nothing can enter. Because what he sees is the father telling him, you can't learn. You are a fool. Oh, no, no, dollar. You can't go far. You are so distracted. You are all kinds of damaging. The boy was actually doing poorly in school anyway. No self-confidence. You can do this. He didn't hear it for one day. They sent him to boarding school. It got worse there. Some of his teachers, this one comes to speak big, 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 big grammar, but he doesn't know the boy. The, ask the boy, he doesn't. He said, tell him shame. Everybody, shame. And the boy, timidity. Then look, there are children like that in society who can't associate with a particular class. They cannot fulfill a vision in life because they were certain damages, they, certain abuses, they suffered while they were growing up as young people. That is what ministry is meant to be doing. That is a problem ministers should be addressing. Church is like a nation. Now, every nation has ministries. Mm, Nigeria is a nation. Nigeria has a government. The government appoints ministries, ministers. Minister for finance, minister for health, minister for this, minister for agriculture, ministers for, for youth development, and all that. Now, church is also structured that same way. Church is like a nation. You have a pastor who is the father or the head of that nation, the president of that nation. Inside that nation, you have ministries. Ministries. Ministries, not church. There should be ministry for teenage Adolescence certification. It should be ministry for youth development. There should be ministry for solving unemployment. There should be ministry for solving, I'm telling you, it should be ministry for solving addiction problems. Do you know people are heavily addicted? Who can address that problem? Now you can go about addiction. Why do people smoke? Why do people drink I met somebody I was talking with him why do you drink the guy opened up he said anytime I drink I summon boldness he said I grew up not knowing how to talk in class I'm a shy person so when I drink shyness how do I help this person who needs to stay on alcohol to be bold how do I solve this problem that's how ministers should think carry hands and lay on that person you think that is what is going to solve that thing so that's not the job. There are things your laying of hands will not do. The things it won't do. That's the way you should live your life. With that mindset that anytime you see a problem, don't just see problems and bypass. Check, can something be done about this thing? Is there a literature I can read to help me discover how to solve that problem? Some of you here who are not, you should be pregnant with ministries by now. Pregnant with assignment. You want to be broke in life? You want to be poor in life? Okay, continue. Do you know, at the time, I, be, I started becoming ashamed of some of the ladies in the house. Okay, that document is not here. Ashamed. No ministry. You just carry five things and come to church and sit down. And you want success. Every day you're complaining. God has given you a fine face. Giving you good English language. You can't go and communicate a problem out there. Communicate to a problem. Do you know I sat down in my office one day. I don't know if you remember. She was talking. Why she was talking? I was drawing out my paper. From my shelf. I drew out my pen. While she was talking, I designed a full-fledged women's ministry right there. I wrote the name. Rare Women's Foundation. I wrote the vision. Okay, what's the motto? Raising women of values and substance. I wrote the vision. Clearly written. Wrote the mission. 
wrote the objective why she was talking to me she finished talking i didn't talk again i paused i left her in the office i went and sat there developed it i said thinking who do i hand over this vision to now i took it back i went and fired it waiting for a day somebody will come to me and say pastor i'm passionate about the women can't you see some day miss wife nika day me her own ministry women and children yet women and children ministry has made her a billionaire can't you see pastor sarah Willy? family ministry she has gone to study what it takes to build families and you come for women's convention every year thousands of women all over the world are gathered and listening to one woman who has a vision called matters of the heart Do you know even entertainment is a ministry? What are you doing? If there's anything that is capable of making you so great in this generation, hey, let's leave it. So three persons who is going to pick this book, you are the most blessed man on this earth. Three persons, just reserved for three persons. How to build a strong church. Now, there are about five G's for building a strong church. I'm going to show you this evening briefly, then we'll close. Of course, we are running discipleship this season. Discipleship. I told you discipleship is the way to build a church. It's the way to raise members, raise people. The way to train people. Discipleship. I'm going to show you five solid G's. Five solid G's. G's. G's, as in G, 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 letter G. Five G's for building a strong church. Strong in terms of numerical growth. Strong in terms of financial exploit. Strong in terms of social impact. That kind of results on that Elijah has in Ukraine. It's the use duplicated th- three times or more but there's a way to build that kind of church i trust god to give me the time to exhaust this let me say this before i get into that there are vital ingredients for building a successful church vital ingredients i'll show you about five then we'll get into those five g's number one vision a church without vision is like a church that has no direction. It's heading nowhere. Because vision creates direction. What are you seeing? It determines what you will pursue. Pastor Paul Yongicho is pastoring a church of the largest church in Asia now. Go for his cell leaders meeting. 400,000 cell leaders are gathered for one meeting. Not 400 church members. Not 400,000 church members. 400,000 cell leaders. Leaders of groups. 400,000. Stadium is full. That's what this thing. Look at problems all over society. Problems in the health sector. We need people with ministries to go and solve it. The difference between you now and the guy who is trying to do it with his um, brain is that you don't, you don't just have the techniques, you also have the spirituality. You also have the power to match up the thing. Places I go to now, if the case refuses to respond by knowledge, it responds by power. You have to carry boats. That's why we balance this thing. You, we come here, we worship, we pray. Because we know we can't do this thing based on just talk, talk, or knowledge, knowledge. We have to balance it. Don't play with these things we are doing. You need to take every opportunity and write. Number one, vision. A church must know where it's going to. And the people in the church must know where the church is going to. The question is how many of you know where we are going to? Now listen, you need to have a picture of the kind of church become in the next five years. Until you're able to see that, you won't pursue it. You need to have a picture of the kind of person you will become in this ministry in the next five years. 
That's vision. What do you see Priestin Hughes becoming five years from now? What do you see yourself becoming five years from now? This is one of the most important ingredients you need to have. You see people who come into a vision and maybe they jump out. They have not seen. Like you come into Priestin Hughes. You, okay, I like your praise session. I like your worship. I like the pastor. He speaks well. But, you know, but, you know, but, 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 but. The problem the guy has, he has not seen what the ministry can become. He has not also seen what he can become in the ministry. For the continuation of this message, please play the next track.